Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ray and welcome to our video tutorial series on Objective-C data types. In this first video tutorial, we're going to take a look at integer data types. Okay, so integer data types are the data type used to store whole numbers, you know, like 1, 2, 42, a million, so on. Not decimal numbers. There's a different data type for that, which we'll get to in a separate video. When you declare an integer variable, you give the name of the integer data type, and then you give the name of the, what you want to name the variable, and then you optionally you can set it equal to an initial value. One of the integer data types happens to be called int. We'll look at a bunch of others in a few minutes. When you create an integer data type, you can decide whether it is a signed or unsigned data type. The difference is signed means it can be positive or negative, but unsigned means it can only be positive. The trade-off is if you choose unsigned, you obviously can't have negatives, but you can have a higher maximum positive value. When you choose an integer data type, you're choosing how many bytes do you want to use to store the value. The trade-off is the more bytes you use to store a value, the bigger the potential value you can store in there, or the smaller, basically the wider range, but uh, you're using more memory, obviously. And there are three different types of integers in iOS. There's architecture-dependent types, explicit data types, and Apple types. Let's look at each of these one at a time. Objective-C is built on top of C. So the data types that it uses for integers are the same as you are used to if you are a C programmer in the past. So as you can see, going from the least number of bytes to the most value of bytes and also the smallest range to the widest range, you have care, short, int, long, and long, long. And you can see here the smallest one, which is character, is only one byte. The biggest one, which is long, long, is eight bytes long. So in the old days, it used to be that every iOS device ran on a 32-bit OS. So you always knew when your code was running that you could be sure that they were going to have these sizes. However, recently Apple has introduced some new devices like the iPhone 5S and the iPad mini retina version that have a 64-bit OS on them. And because of this, the size of one of these architecture-dependent data types, which is long, has changed. In 32-bit OS, it used to be 4 bytes, and in 64-bit OS, it used to be 8 bytes. So you can no longer assume that it's only 4 bytes because you want to rate your apps that will work just fine on both architectures. So the second type of data types you need to know about is the Apple data types. Apple's actually defined their own versions of integers, NS integer and NSU integer for the unsigned version. And they are defined to be 4 bytes on a 32-bit OS and 8 bytes on a 64-bit OS. And if you look at the definition of these types, you'll see that NS integer is actually just defined as an integer on 32-bit OS and as a long on 64-bit OS. Now, why does this exist? Why has Apple created another data type? Why couldn't they have just used long? It turns out to be there for historical reasons. In the old days, there were some APIs that should have been returning long, but actually they were returning int. So Apple needed to have an easy way to transition those APIs from 32-bit architecture to 64-bit architecture. So they define their own type, and as you can see here, which is defined to int on 32-bit and long on 64-bit, and they just replace those APIs to use NS integer instead, and so everything would just work with a recompilation. It's there for historical reasons, but they're still used heavily in Apple APIs today, so you're, you'll see NS integer a lot, so you need to be aware of what's going on here. The last data type you need to know about is explicit data types. This is the size to use if you want to guarantee know how big the data type is, regardless of what architecture you're running on. So, for example, the first one here, which is int 8t, that's always going to be 8 bits or 1 byte, regardless of whether you're running on 32-bit or 64-bit OS. And as you can see here, there's are similar um, data types for 2-byte, 4-byte, 8-byte values. Okay, so we've looked at a lot of data types here. You might wonder, well, which should I use and when? Okay, there's good reasons to use both of them. Let's start with NS Integer. So first of all, if you're interacting with Apple code, that's a good reason to use NS Integer because if it takes NS Integer as a parameter, you might as well have a local variable that's also an NS Integer. It just only makes sense. Secondly, if you want to make some APIs that look like other Apple APIs and sort of conform to the way they do things, that's another good reason to use it. For example, maybe you're making an open source iOS library and you want your library to look and feel like regular Apple code, that's one reason to consider using it. Next, sometimes you just want the native size for an integer on that architecture. 32-bit OSs, they work really efficiently with 32-bit integers. 64-bit OSs work really efficiently with 64-bit integers. So if you want the, the most granularity you can get while still running in a performant way on that platform, that's another reason to consider using it. But unfortunately, it's not as easy as saying always use NS integer. There's still valid reasons to use the other integer data types, which is why we're talking about them now. So why? 
So first of all, if, you're, if you ever need to guarantee you know how big an integer is regardless of the platform, you definitely want to use the explicit data types. An example of this is if you're doing network programming and you need to send a packet between two different machines of information and you want to send an integer across. Well, you want to make sure that regardless of whether the machine on either side is 32-bit or 64-bit, and they may even be different, that you know exactly what's going across the wire and exactly how big it is so you can unpack it properly on the other side. Similar issues arise if you're doing programming with binary file formats uh, or many other reasons. Sometimes you're just looping in an array and you're just doing a simple little thing like i, I equals you know, 1 to 10. In that case, it doesn't really matter how big the integer is really, does it? Because it's only in a control loop in an array and it's limited, so really any of the data types you want to use could be just fine for that. If you are worried about optimizing your code for portability, then you might not want to use NS integer. And this is because Objective-C is built on top of C and C++. So if you wanted to, you could build a C and C++ library that contains sort of the core logic of your app. And then, and then you could use non-Apple data types. And then it'll be easy to take your code, your cross-platform C, C++ code, and reuse it on another app, say a Windows app or uh, any other kind of app that uses C and C++. And last but not least, you might not always want to use NS integer by default if you don't have to because you're using more memory to store those values. And if you're always, if you're making a whole lot of integers and you're using eight bytes when really you could get away with only using, you know, four bytes or two bytes or even one byte, then you might want to consider doing so to just reduce your memory requirements. Okay, one last thing, then we're going to get into the demo. So now that you know how to create these integers, how do you get them to print out? Well, in Objective-C, the way you print out things to the screen is with a function called nslog. And it takes a format string, which is a way of saying it's a string that inside the string you can put certain placeholder values that it will then substitute with some variables afterwards. So the example, as you can see on the right-hand side here, it has a integer, and it sets it to be equal to 34, and a short it sets it to be equal to 20. And now you want to print those out. So you just put your string, or wherever you want the first thing to print out, you put uh, percent %d, and uh, after the string you see that, that the first thing that substituted in is the my int, and percent %d is the specifier you happen to use to print out an integer. And to print out a short, you use percent %hd, uh, and, that's how, uh, and then that's how the short gets substituted in. So looking at, here's a table that shows what the specifier, specifiers are. For a 8-bit unsigned character, you use percent %c. For a 32-bit signed integer, you use percent %d. For an unsigned 32 bit integer, you have several options. Percent use kind of the normal decimal manner, but you can also print it out in hex with percent %x or percent capital X, which capitalizes it or not. And similarly, percent %o or percent capital O for octal. Now you might wonder, well, what about short? You know, there's nothing in here for 16 bit. Well, that's because you can modify some of these values with modifiers here. So if you put h before the d, that says actually this isn't a 32-bit integer, it's actually just a short instead. And that explains why the percent %hd was used for short above. Okay, so you might wonder, how do I print out ns integer? Well, Apple has given some guidelines for this. For ns integer, you use percent %ld or percent %lx if you want hex. And then the important thing to remember is you have to cast it to a long before you pass it in. If you do it this way, it will work just fine on a 32-bit or a 64-bit architecture. So here's a quick example of that. Okay, so let's play around with this a little bit. I'm going to create a new project in Xcode with the iOS application single view application template. This is a good kind of bare bones project to play around with. Let's name the project Hello Objective C and save it somewhere to your hard drive. Next, go ahead and open appdelegate.m. There's a method in here called application did finish launching with options. This is a really good point to put some test code like you're doing now to play around with some data types because it gets called when the application first launches. Let's create an integer here and we'll set it equal to one. So regular signed integer and also let's make an unsigned integer just by putting the unsigned prefix beforehand. Set that equal to two. And let's log it out. Remember, the way you do that in Objective-C was with nslog. And remember to put the at sign before the string like you see here to treat it as an Objective-C string. And to print out an integer, use the percent %d. And similarly, let's print out the unsigned integer. The format specifier for that is percent %u instead. And I'm going to go ahead and run this. And down here at the console, 
you see that I have the int and the unsigned int printed out. Now let's just do one more of these. We'll print out a, we'll make a long as well. So I'm going to add a line here to add a long. And I'll log that out just like the others, but this time the specifier is not percent %d because I want to prefix that to treat it as a long, so I need percent %ld. So run that and I uh, get out every single value. Now let's do something here. What I want to do is I want to print out the size of each of these. And you can do that in C with a method that's called size of. You just call size of, pass the name of the type, and it gives you the value back uh, in bytes. So size of i, and that's going to return an unsigned long. So I need percent lu bytes. And let's just repeat that for the other uh, integers we have here. So we have size of uh, our unsigned int variable and size of our long variable. So I run that and I see here that uh, the integer is four bytes, unsigned int is four bytes, and long is also four bytes. But that's because right now we are running on the iPhone 3.5 inch simulator. Let's see what happens if we switch to the iPhone Retina 64-bit simulator instead. Now when I run this, int and unsigned int are also 4 bytes as before, but long is now 8 bytes, as we discussed earlier. Let's do one last thing. I want to print out the range of each of these values, and there's some handy constants for that in limits.h. So let me import that header file. And now I've, for the int, I wanted to print out the low range to the high range. And they're both going to be int, so they're both percent %d. And uh, we have to cast those constants. We get two integers. And we have int min is the minimum value, and int max is the maximum value. And we'll do that same exact thing for the unsigned int. But of course, they're two unsigned int numbers. And we have to uh, cast them as well. Now note that there actually is no constant for the minimum unsigned int value, so I'm just going to pass a zero in for that. And uh, there is a constant, though, for the uint max, so I pass that in, and I have to cast it not as an int, but as an unsigned int. And last but not least, for printing out the long, two longs, and long min and long max. So go ahead and run that, and check it out. We're still running on a 64-bit simulator. So we got basically negative 2 million to about positive 2 million for an integer. For unsigned integer, we start at 0, but we go up to now 4 million with wider range. And then for the long, we have a uh, negative gigantic number to a positive gigantic number. Now if I switch this back to the 32-bit simulator, then I see that the long is now the same as the ensis range. All right, that's it for this video series. But before we go, I wanted to leave you guys with a challenge to play around with this for yourself. I want you to extend the example we just did, except add three new data types here. And I have some code here. Just add this to your project and replace the question marks with the code you need to do to get these values to print out, just like the earlier examples. Also, you'll see after you do that, there's a little gotcha. And I want you to put this gotcha code in there. And I want you to run it on a 64-bit architecture and see what happens. And, uh, it, and then try to explain to yourself why this is a bad thing to do and why it's incorrect, because this is a common gotcha that you might not have or you, that you might come across if you're not familiar with what we just went through today. So that's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.